Greetings once more. I am Mr. Christopher Kanyule, doing grade 11, cycle geometry. This is one of the most important uh, topics if you want to do well in your matric year. Remember, it's important that you understand that we need about 10 theorems to do in this section. Let us start with the first theorem. This will be the first theorem that I want us to look at. Whenever I look at this theorem, I always put it together with this other theorem. I want us to look at the two of them at the same time. This is the center of a circle. This is also another center of a circle. It goes down there. Now, when you look at these two theorems, let me just call this one, let me just call this two. If this line is 90 degrees, if this angle here is 90 degrees, we'll be proving that this side is equal to this side. And if this side is equal to this side, we'll be proving that this angle is 90 degrees. That's the difference between the two theorems. What it is important that we must be able to, to, to say our theorems in words, because it, that is also examinable. Fortunately, you, see, you say what you see. What is it that we have here? This line here is called a chord. This is a chord. There's a line that is drawn from the center of a circle. It is drawn perpendicular to a chord. What does it do to a chord? It bisects the chord. Let's do that again. We've got a line that is drawn from the center of a circle. How is it drawn? It is drawn perpendicular to this chord, therefore it will bisect the chord. Now, it means that we need to prove that that line really bisects the chord. That is what we need to prove in this theorem. Uh, this next one, this part here, since this distance from there to here is the same as this distance from here to here, so this is the midpoint. So we've got a line that is drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord. It is perpendicular to a chord. So what is it that we prove there? We prove that this line, it is perpendicular to a chord. We prove the colored part. So in other words, this theorem says, a line drawn from the center of a circle, perpendicular to a chord, it will bisect the chord. All that you need to, to prove there is to show that this side to this side, it is the same as that side. How do we do that? you go back to grade 11. Let's, let's, let's do the formal proof required to prove RTP. Number one, let's have our construction. We need to have our construction as well. A construction is what you add on the diagram which was not there. Hence, when you do your construction, it's advisable that you do it in dotted lines. So in this particular case, when I do my construction, I will have to join this line here to that chord. What is the name of this line? A line from the center of a circle to the circumference of a circle is called a radius. Now, I've got a line from the center of a circle to this side again. Ah, what is the name of that side? Of that side? It is called the circumference. That line is called the circumference, I mean, I mean the radius. So this is the radius, this is the radius. It comes from the center of a circle to the circumference. That is the radius. Now, how do we prove that this side is equal to this side? Now that we've got two triangles, let me just, let me just uh, label. Let's call the center O. Let's call this A. Let's call this M. Let's call this N. Now, if we push in those labels, we want to prove that AM is equal to NM. That is what we want to prove. We want to prove that uh, AN, we want to prove that AM is the same as NM. Because the theorem says a line drawn from the center of a circle perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. You prove the one that is towards the end. Does this line really bisect the chord? That's what we are proving here. In other words, we are proving that AM is equal to NM. As I said there, remember what is it that we constructed? We joined line, oh, let's just say we joined line OA, OA, and ON. Now, once I join those two lines, what is it that I see there? I can see two triangles. Now, it takes me back to my grade uh, 10, where I was studying about, uh, I was learning about congruency. Now, your congruency becomes important. The idea here is to take this triangle and combine it to this other triangle and prove congruency there. Remember, there are four cases of congruency. That's what we'll, we'll be applying here. Now, how do you do the proof? Let's do the proof. Let's prove this. Where am I going to do my proof? I'm going to do my proof in these two triangles. 
I'm going to do my proof in triangle. This is O A M, O A M, and triangle O N M, O N M. I'm going to prove congruency in these two triangles. I want to show that these two triangles are congruent. Why do you have to show that these two triangles are congruent? Remember, if you've got two triangles, in this particular case, it, let me just take this triangle. If I want to prove that these two triangles are congruent, I've got to show either that this side is the same as this side, this one equals to that one, this one equals to this one. So that when I take this and put it on top of this one, it will exactly be the same. What is the case of congruency this one calls? It is called side, side, side. Remember, there are four cases of congruency. Number one is side, side, side. Number two is side, angle, side. Remember, the angle must be the included angle. What is an included angle? If I'm talking about this side and this side, this angle in between them will refer to it as the included angle. So I can't be talking about this side and this side, then that angle, and then, and, and then assume that I'll be using this as a, as, as a reason. If I'm going to use side and this side and this, it sh I should be using the included angle, not any other angle. Number three, remember these are the four cases of congruence. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side. Uh, number four, 90 degrees, hypotenuse, and the side. So you compare the two triangles. If the three corresponding sides are the same, therefore the two triangles are the same. Or if the side and an included angle and the side of the two triangles are the same, you compare the two of them. Two angles and a side, 90 degrees, hypotenuse on the side. In this particular uh, triangle that I'm dealing with, I can see 90 degrees. Therefore, it pushes me to the last one. There is 90 degrees here. So I know exactly what, what to do in order to prove this one. Let us prove. In other words, let's take, let me just uh, unpack this one. I've got a triangle like this one, which is this one, OAM. I've, I've labeled it as OAM. So this is O, this is A, and this is M. Remember here, it is 90 degrees. There's also another triangle that I'm comparing to it on the other side. The other triangle is, uh, it's also O, M, and N. It is also equal to 90 degrees. I'm just comparing, if I can show two things that are the, uh, three uh, things that are same, that are the same there, and check which, which, which case it falls, then I can conclude that the two triangles are congruent. That's what we're, we're doing here. Let's do the same. What is it? Remember, this is not given. This is what we want to prove. I've put it in here so that it, I can highlight it so that we'll know exactly what it is that we want to show. We want to show that AM, AM is equal to NM. It is equal to NM. That's what we want to prove. Let us prove the same. Number one, we know that in this triangle, let's look at this triangle. Look at it. Do you see OM in this particular triangle? It is equal to what on that other triangle? It is also equal to OM. So we say OM in this triangle, OAM. We've got OM, which is the same as what on the other triangle? This OM belongs to this triangle. The same OM belongs to the other triangle. So OM will be the same as OM. What is the reason for this? They are common sides. The two are common. So we've got one. What are these? What are these OM, OM called? Are sides. So if it is side, it can be this side, it can either be this side, it can either be that side, it can either be that side. So we've got side. We don't know which one it is at the moment. Number two, I use my eyes. Your eyes are the most powerful tool in your mathematics. What is it that you see here? That is, that is, that is the same. This angle is the same as this angle. Right. So in this particular, if this angle is 90 degrees, because this is a straight line, this one will be 90 degrees as well. Let us call this M1. Let's call this M2, right. So we're saying in this side, we've got an angle called M1, which is the same as what in the other angle? If this is M1, that will be M2. So M1 is the same as M2. Why are these two the same? They're both equals to 90 degrees. Both of them are 90 degrees, so they are equal. So we've just proved that this side is the same as this side. And you proved the 90 degrees that it is the same as 90 degrees in the second one. So we are now going to the third part. 
which will be OA, you get OA, it is exactly the same as ON. Why are these two the same? They are the radius of the same circle. A radius is the distance from the center of a circle to the circumference, center of a circle to the circumference. So the radius is the same in one circle. So OA is equal to ON. Why are those two the same? They are radii. This is the plural for radius, radii. Now, now watch here. What is this called? It's a side. What is this called? 90 degrees. What is this called? It is the hypotenuse. So which case of congruency will work here? It is the fourth one. 90 degrees, hypotenuse on a side. 90 degrees, hypotenuse, and a common side in this particular case. So that's the case that we'll be using this one. Hence, we can conclude by saying, therefore, triangle, the ones that we are talking about, this triangle OAM, OAM, is equal in all respects to triangle uh, ONM, ONM. Now, why are we proving congruence in these two triangles when you are required to find AM is equal to N, NM? Once you show that two triangles are congruent, it simply means that they are equal in all respects. In other words, when I take this triangle and put it on this one, it will sit exactly on top of each other. You will never notice the other triangle. Likewise here, if I take this triangle and come and put it this side, exactly on top of this one, I won't see that the, the, there are two triangles. I'll just see one triangle. That's what we mean congruence. If, if, if I cannot see the one underneath, then the two will be congruent. They'll be equal in all respects. In other words, by saying the two triangles are congruent, we simply mean that this angle is equal to this one. This side is, in other words, the corresponding side will be the same. If this side will be equal to that side. So it simply means that this side will be the same as this side. They are co I can't compare this side and this side because they're not sitting on the corresponding position. So this one is sitting on the corresponding position with this one. Then this one will be the same as that one. This one will be the same as that one. So this is what congruence is giving us. So this side will then be equal to this side. So the fact that we are saying the two triangles are equal in all respects, meaning that they are congruent, they are congruent, which simply means that the corresponding sides are also equal as well as the corresponding angles are equal. What are the corresponding sides in this case? So saying this side is equal to that one, this side is equal to this one, and this one is equal to this one. Where do we get this one from? We're getting it from the fact that the two triangles are congruent. So if the two co triangles are congruent, then the corresponding sides are the same as well as the corresponding angles will be the same. So in this particular case, we can therefore say what we wanted to prove AM is equal to NM. We wanted to prove that this side is equal to this side. We wanted to prove that this side is equal to this side. Therefore, we can simply say that AM, AM is, of course, equal to NM. Why are the two sides equal? We got that from the fact that they are congruent. So we got it from congruency. Right, this is how you go about proving this fact that AM is equal to NM. Remember, the theorems, they get on top of each other. What is it that we used to prove that this side is equal to this side? We used the, 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 the fact that the two triangles are congruent. We've got to first prove that this triangle is congruent to this one. If we dismantle it, it will look like this. We need to show that this triangle is the same as this triangle. If they're equal in all respects, it means that they're congruent, then the corresponding, and the corresponding sides then will be equal. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.